Thank you. Ellie Schlein. Thanks, Chair. And thanks to Ignazio, of course. Uh, I'm very glad to work on this opinion, and I think it's important for the Libe Committee to take into account what Deve has to say when it comes to fight against corruption and organized crime. Corruption and illicit financial flows are cross-border phenomena, as Ignazio uh, correctly pointed out, um, and should be addressed globally for this reason. Transnational organized crime in particular is an ever-changing industry adapting to markets that know no borders or rules. Uh, drug trafficking, smuggling of immigrants, trafficking in firearms, counterfeit goods, minerals. Um, every year, countless lives are lost as a, result, as a result of organized crime. The costs of corruption are high, especially in developing countries, because in situations of underdevelopment and social inequalities, the risk of infiltration is very high. Corruption undermines development and reduces the effectiveness of development aid, and its costs cannot be quantified only in economic terms. It also negatively affects both the volume and quality of public services, undermining public confidence in democratic institutions, and it is both a cause and an effect of the lack of tr trust and reduced legitimacy of the public authorities in the eyes of the population, reinforcing state fragility. Corruption is also likely to raise income inequality, affecting the poor disproportionately. In this regard, corruption can certainly be defined as a regressive tax, which affects the poorest and the most vulnerable. Corruption also has a negative consequence on the environment through increased pollution, deforestation, and depletion of natural resources, as well as trafficking in environmental products like, like wildlife. So, it also uh, is connected to illicit financial flows uh, that, as you remind, we uh, treated in a, a report last year of which I was responsible. Uh, the flows are estimated in a trillion dollar a year, and uh, uh, it means that we should keep on insisting on more transparency, especially on the beneficial ownership and the other instruments to help develop, developing countries fight tax evasion and tax avoidance, which are strictly connected to the work of organized crime and to the issue of corruption. We have many instruments that were mentioned already at the international level, the UNCA, uh, CAC, uh, CAC, the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, the OECD Anti-Bribery Convention, the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative and also the Financial Action Task Force, which have resulted in a positive related developments, but developing countries have not yet seen many direct benefits from these international conventions and initiatives, partly because they lack capacity to implement and enforce them, but also because this has not always been the primary intention of all the initiatives. So the EU has so far invested a lot in fighting corruption and accessing, in accessing neighboring states, but no strategy has been put in place when it comes to curb corruption in developing countries. The Commission should develop a comprehensive strategy for corruption risk management, specifically in developing countries. The, US, uh, the EU has to support this, the establishment of strong national system for corruption control, including central and local government systems on audits, procurement, public financial management, but also social accountability measures to enable watchdogs, as, for example, parliaments, law enforcement, uh, enforcement agencies, and civil society. Budget support should be accompanied by, with clear plans to mitigate corruption risks. <laughs> Whistleblowing is also an essential tool to detect corrupt practices, and the EU should protect whistleblowers also outside the EU territories. We should establish direct reporting mechanisms for citizens in EU aid recipient countries who want to blow the whistle on irregularities in EU-funded aid programs, like many bilateral aid agencies um, already do. The issue of good governments and fight against corruption is one of the great revolutions of the new SDGs. The previous framework did not include any governance goals regarding the issues of transparency, accountability, and anti-corruption. This time we have a standalone goal dealing with um, good governments and with the three, uh, three key priorities of accountability, transparency, and anti-corruption. So I really thank the rapporteur Ignazio for the draft, and I'm looking forward to contribute together with the other shadows. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Um, Marina Albiol.